Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation Decision to Purchase Vision Insurance Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Insurance is part of our overall risk mitigation strategy where we follow the adage of measure twice, cut once, putting a formal process in place, looking something like set the insurance goals, develop a plan to reach them, put the plan in action, and then review the results, repeat the process periodically. Most of this information can be found at Investopedia. Is Vision Insurance worth it? What you should know, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This is by Amy Fontanille, updated May 25th, 2021. In prior presentations, we looked at insurance in general. We then moved to the medical insurance, can, which can be more confusing for reasons we'll state shortly. And then, then we moved to dental and now vision, which have some components and some overlap with the medical insurance. Remember that the classical insurance, liability insurance, property insurance, and life insurance are typically safeguarding us, lowering the risk in the event of an event that might happen in the future, but we're hoping it doesn't happen, possibly the likelihood of it happening being low, but if did, it would be financially devastating, such as we die prematurely, we get sued for millions of dollars, or our house burns down or something like that. With the medical insurance, you have a similar characteristics because you could have a big a disease or something that comes suddenly and that could be financially devastating and the medical insurance often has that out of pocket kind of cap where the insurance company will kick in over and above that which can safeguard in a similar kind of fashion but it also has that preventative kind of stuff involved in it as well when we move to the eye and the dental then there's some overlap in terms of what's going to be covered by medical and what's going to be covered by the eye and dental and the eye and the dental are often going to be things that are more kind of predictable in nature. So you might be doing less strategy for that big event of risk mitigation because that might be under the basic medical kind of plan and trying to think about how can I safeguard against or how can I basically lower my costs for something like my vision care and possibly use it to help me to kind of mitigate the overall risk if I was to have a more significant kind of problem with my eye care. Okay. Is vision insurance worth it? What you should know. So we all know health insurance is something that you shouldn't live without. But what about vision insurance? So you can purchase vision insurance as a group benefit through your employer or as an individual policy. But how does the cost compare to the coverage you'll receive? How vision insurance works. So when you have vision insurance, you send the vision insurer a check for your premium for individual plans or have the premium deducted from your paycheck for your employer sponsored plans. So if you've got your health care through your employer, then they might set it up in a withholding kind of setup. If not, and you wanted to purchase it separately, then of course you'd have to be paying the premiums, but you'd be paying the premiums or someone would be paying the premiums either way. In exchange, you'll receive benefits such as a, a discounted vision exams, glasses, and contacts. Some vision care plans require you to see a provider in the patient's network. So you might have that similar network situation that gives you some restrictions possibly in terms of your options on who you can be using for your vision care. So other vision care plans simply require you to be treated by an optometrist or an opth ophthalmologist. So in other words, you must visit a vision care professional who has graduated from an accredited college of optoma optometry and is licensed by the state uh, or who has gone to medical school and is certified by the American Board of Omph Ophthalmology. Okay, purchasing a plan. If you already have an eye doctor you want to keep seeing, make sure their services will be covered by the plan you're thinking about purchasing. So clearly, same kind of thing with the dental, same kind of thing with the medical. You might first think about who is my current uh, person I'm going to for my eye care, are they covered in the network? And then think about the network or the eye care that you want to be purchasing in terms of insurance. Or you might say, well, I'm gonna purchase the insurance maybe through my uh, employer. I might be limited to the insurance I can purchase and then think about which, which eye care I could go to, what resources are available to me within the network that I'm purchasing in that fashion. So whether you purchase your own insurance or get it through an employer, basic vision care plans range from $5 to $35 a month 
uh, in premiums for an individual. To add coverage for a spouse, domestic partner, or child, you may pay slightly less per person than the plan's individual rate. If your employer offers vision insurance, you may only have one opportunity per, uh, per year to sign up during the annual open enrollment period. Be aware that some individual plan plans change uh, a one-time enrollment fee or they charge a one-time enrollment fee in addition to a monthly premium. So to sign up, it might cost you a bit more to sign up. So regardless of whether you obtain your coverage individually or through work, compare the policy's total annual cost to your anticipated annual vision care expenses. So notice the recommendations here are basically more towards hey, what, what do you think you're going to actually save money on the maintenance kind of services, the, the checkups and whatnot that you're going to have for vision as compared to the traditional insurance, which is more like if you're talking about liability insurance, you're saying are you're going to try to safeguard against an event you're hoping doesn't happen, right? So it's a little bit different the way that's kind of structured. And again, for partially that's because the vision and the medical have some overlap. So if you had like a uh, an accident or you had some uh, big disease in your eye, the question would be, is it covered by medical or vision? The vision often is there to cover the more routine stuff. The more routine stuff isn't safeguarding against the risk so much that you're hoping doesn't happen but may, but is covering the stuff that almost clearly is going to happen at some point uh, in our lives if we get old enough for that to be the case and we might have more eye care or less eye care and then we might be using the insurance to kind of to uh to to pay or mitigate or lower our costs of that eye care as opposed to a classical risk mitigation strategy of something that we hope doesn't happen that might happen in the future so you don't want to pay pay out more than you expect to receive so how much could you save with vision insurance generally the only eye care covered by regular health insurance is care that a, a major eye injury or other major medical problem uh, necessitates. Once again, generally the only eye care covered by regular health insurance, so the regular health insurance, uh, is care that a major eye injury or other major medical problem uh, necessitates. So in other words, that big event of getting in an, eye ac an accident or something like that might be covered over the medical side of things whereas the eye care insurance might be covering more of the types of things that would be the preventative stuff and uh, the more routine kind of activities like the contact lenses and your checkups and updating your glasses and whatnot. Within vision insurance, you're responsible for paying the full price for eye exams and any initial or replacement eyeglass lenses, frames, and or contacts. Generally, insurance companies offer two types of vision insurance benefits packages that give you access to a capped dollar amount of services and products and discount plans uh, simply give you a predetermined discount such as 20% on qualified services. So the amount of savings generated by your vision plan will depend on how many new products and services you purchase in a year. For example, according to the vision service plan, the national average cost for the following products and services are as follows. $206 for an eye exam, $114 for a single lenses, for single lens, and $242 for frames amounting to $562. If you purchase a basic discount plan that covers $5 per month, and that provides a 30% discount on all services and products, you would save about $108. Of course, plans and expenses vary, however, however, uh, expect to save between $100 and $200. So, I, so if you're buying the insurance, obviously, to try to save on your routine kind of kind of eye maintenance, then if you have more maintenance that you need, such as contact lenses, glasses, and so on, those can obviously be more costly. And it might then, if you get a discount on the covered items, then you got to think about the covered items that will be covered uh, and the discounts you'll receive versus the premium that you will have for the policy. So vision insurance and covered expenses. Each plan covers a different set of expenses before signing up for any plan. Check to see if it covers everything you expect to need. So we've got the bare bones plans usually cover only eye exams, contacts, and glasses and may function more like discount plans than they do insurance. 
So notice, again, when you're talking about some of the vision insurance, you might think of it more as a way to try to reduce your costs for the normal expenses, which isn't your normal classical thought for insurance, like life insurance, where you're trying to safeguard against dying prematurely or your home burning down or something. The amount of eye related expenses a vision insurance plan will cover differs significantly from plan to plan. One plan might charge you a $10 copayment for an eye exam and cover the difference. Another plan might pay for $35 of your exam and expect you to pay the rest. So notice the different structure that they have with regard uh, to the plans. Uh, the, and, and this might be because there's a looser kind of relationship within the network, it seems, for the for the eye insurance. So, so it might be more difficult to kind of set what the prices will be amongst different people that are providing the exams. So you might see that they get that set payment amount of the $10, or they might say that we'll pay this amount and then you gotta pay you know, above that. So it'll depend on the plan. So also, a plan does offer coverage for eye surgery or permanent vision loss. It may not be, be anything like the coverage you'd use to getting from health insurance. Once again, also, if a plan does offer coverage for eye surgery or permanent vision loss, it may not be anything like the coverage you're used to getting from health insurance. Example of vision insurance. The largest vision insurance provider in the United States is VSP Vision Care, funded in 1955 by a group of optometrists. VSP currently has 88 million members and more than 40,000 doctors in its network. VSP Vision offers two types of plans. We got the standard and easy options. For the standard plan, depending on your zip code, monthly premiums start at just $13 with an eye exam copay of $15 covering up to $150 in new frames. Though it does not cover a uh, LASIK, uh, you can receive a coupon for an average of 15% off of uh, your services. The easy options plans is a bit more expensive at around $24 a month. This plan has all the same benefits of the standard, does but allows members to customize their benefits package by allocating more money toward the products they use more often. So we have the vision insurance plans limits. The limits, we've already touched on some of the limitations of vision insurance. You, uh, here are some additional factors to consider when deciding whether to purchase coverage. So the plan might cover lenses for glasses, but only basic lenses. So if you want the super fancy lenses, then possibly not. If you want lightweight or anti-glass lenses, you'll have to pay the extra cost. The plan might cover frames, but only up to a certain amount. So if you want a pair of $250 frames, only part of your cost will be covered. So if you're getting the glasses and the glasses are covered and you want the super cool brand name frame, then uh, then you might have to pay a bit more. So, or the plan might cover the retail markup uh, of the frames and require you to pay the wholesale cost. Some plans uh, will only cover glasses or contacts, but not both during the same benefit period. If you wanted to update both your contacts and glasses, you would have to get contacts one year, and then get another eye exam and choose the glasses benefits benefit 12 or 24 months later. So in other words, if you've got an eye problem and you need glasses, then you might want contacts, but you might want contacts and glasses so that you can wear your contacts when you don't want your glasses to be worn and then wear your glasses like at home or something. But you can't get both at the same time, but you might be able to do two separate exams and then get the coverage of the glasses and the contacts that way. So some plans have waiting periods ranging anywhere from 30 days to 36 months. During the waiting period, you will receive uh, either reduced or no benefits. The purpose of the waiting period is to prevent people from waiting until they have an expensive problem to sign up for the vision insurance. We saw the similar kind of thing with the dental insurance. So you might say, well, what if I need that LASIK eye surgery or something and I sign up for the plan and then I and then I do all this expensive stuff. I buy my contact lenses and whatever, and I get the surgery right after I bought the plan. Wouldn't that be defeating the purpose of insurance? Because the insurance is supposed to be saying that'd be like <laughs> that would be like uh, getting car insurance after you got in a car accident to cover the car accident, right? So how are they going to safeguard against that? They could give you an exam and do the pre-existing condition thing, or they could say, well, we're we're just going to have a waiting period <laughs> so that you can't just just jump in and then uh, do the procedure 
So that kind of thwarts that strategy. If you're thinking about that strategy, just going to wait and buy the insurance right before you have a problem. Uh, then they're going to try to just stop you from doing that. So the way insurance companies are able to pay benefits when people need them is by spreading risk among a large pool of people. Some members are healthy and some are not. However, most will experience some issue and at different times. Insurance companies need the premiums from healthy people to pay the expenses of unhealthy people. So that's the point. It's a numbers game. You got more people in the pool than they can predict from big numbers what the average cost is going to be for them to be paying out and that's how they're going to have to calculate their premiums if you got a bunch of people jumping into the pool and they're all sick already <laughs> then, then uh, that skews the calculation in terms of how they're going to how they're going to how the premiums are going to cost it would result in higher premiums so fortunately because the benefits of vision insurance are limited to vision correction pr uh, products and services as well as eye exams, unlike health insurance, having a pre-existing condition will not raise your monthly premium. Alternatives to vision insurance. If vision insurance sounds too complicated, you don't think you really need it, or you're not sure if you, if you will pay, uh, if it will pay off, it's fine to skip it. Unlike skipping health insurance, skipping vision insurance isn't likely to land you in bankruptcy court or put your life in jeopardy. So notice again, when you're looking at other kinds of insurance like life insurance, you got, you got a safeguard against that because you're hoping you don't die prematurely. But if you did, it could be a catastrophe to your family. And that's the point. If your home burnt down and you didn't have the property insurance, that could be financially devastating. If someone sued you for millions of dollars and you don't have millions of dollars, that could be a problem. With the vision, it looks like some of the big cost items might be in the medical area. And so you're going to think, OK, well, maybe those things will be covered by the medical. The vision looks like it's going to be more like the routine maintenance and wear and tear type of stuff, which doesn't look like there's that big item, that big thing, that big event or sickness that could push you over into bankruptcy due to medical bills is is their gist in my interpretation of what they're saying here there are a number of ways to get discounted vision care without purchasing vision insurance big box retailers like costco and walmart have optical centers uh, in some of their stores the centers offer exams by licensed optometrists and sell reasonably priced glasses and contacts exams uh, exam costs vary by location because the optometrists who staff them are independent of the retailers so walmart lets you look at frames and their prices on its website so if you're not terribly particular about your frames you can order a complete set of glasses through an online retailer at a stunningly cheap price for example how does six dollars and ninety five six dollars and ninety five so that sounds great for both lenses and frames with five dollars and ninety five shipping sound that's I'm, I'm i want some frames right now some online stores will let you send them a pair of frames and they will add the uh, prescription lenses so then you can actually get your custom frames and you say put my lenses in that frame discounted contact lenses are also available online you will still need a prescription from an eye doctor when uh, using these online services what vision insurance does does costco accept Costco optional accepts most major vision insurance plans. However, these plans vary depending on the Costco location. Discount plans are not accepted. So what vision insurance does Walmart accept? Walmart accepts most vision insurance plans, but only for eye exams. Walmart offers its own vision insurance for customers wishing to purchase lenses, frames, and contacts. Uh, does vision insurance cover vision therapy? According to the Vision Therapy Institute, when insurance covers some of the costs for vision therapy, uh, it is covered by health insurance, not vision insurance. What's the bottom line? Deciding whether to purchase vision insurance can be tricky. It sure can. It's not, uh, it's not unilaterally good or bad uh, deal. Whether it makes sense for you to purchase a policy depends on a number of factors, such as the policy options you have to choose from, the type of vision care products and services you need, and how frequently you need them. To make, uh, to make sure you're getting a product that will be valuable to you, do the research and the math before you sign up.